Okay, folks, so um, today the internet is down, uh, so this is not going to be a stream. Uh, basically, uh, a while ago, you might remember uh, Lockpicking Patrolman did a uh, sort of impromptu live where he tried to uh, remove superglue from a lock that he had intentionally messed with. Um, and that, you know, ran into a few different problems. So what I've done here is I got a couple of uh, Schlage branded JD60 deadbolts. Um, these used to be the Dexter deadbolts. They're now Schlage branded, but uh, yeah, they are like the cheapest Schlage or a Legion uh, deadbolt. Very, very simple thing. Uh, they've got thumb turns on the inside. Both of those are working, although they are dragging a little bit because when I put the glue in, I kind of screwed up and I put the glue in before I put everything on the jig. So the cylinders were kind of tilted and a lot of glue ran down to the back and got into the uh, tailpiece retainer area and so things are a little sticky there. Uh, we do have the keys for each of these and theoretically we may be able to actually get them to work. Uh, what we are going to do is for one of them I have this syringe and this big can of heavy-duty uh, acetone and for the other I have this uh, Eagle torch lighter uh, which normally I carry around in order to uh, defrost frozen locks uh, in the winter because New York City we do actually get that kind of weather. Uh, glue I use were Crazy glue, uh, single use, little tubes. I just took one of these and put half the tube into lock A, half the tube into lock B, uh, as evenly as possible. And yeah, so I think that's kind of all the explanation that's necessary beyond just narrating this thing. I think we're gonna do the acetone in lock B just because uh, acetone is kind of flammable and you don't want that right next to, uh, yeah. And last but not least, of course, safety glasses. You know, safety uh, third and all that. Um, let's try applying the heat first. So we've got that torch turned up. Uh, as high as it gets, and I'm just gonna get that right into the keyway there. Now, the way the glue went in, uh, there wasn't really any like big lump of glue at the face of the keyway, it kind of all went deep inside. Maybe it you know glommed up a little bit at some of the corners. But we're going to just heat that up, keeping an eye out for any major discoloration. I mean, there's already a little bit where the glue deposits were, but uh, also with this finish, it is kind of notorious for being damaged. And, okay. So... Before this, I could not even get the keys into the lock. Now I can, but the pins are still not free enough. So we're going to just keep doing this for a little bit.
If there's a lot of background noise in this uh, recording, that's because I do have a really big box fan going uh, to give me the ventilation because of the materials that we are working with here. And that is already looking pretty toasty. Let's see. So we're getting some play in that, and even just putting the key in there, I can feel how hot that uh, plug has gotten. That is, that is toasty. Um, I mean, we can keep doing this for a little while, but I'm not sure how much good we are really doing at this point. Because if that gets any hotter, I'm going to have to dig out my special heavy-duty gloves. that does not seem to be getting us anywhere and that really is quite toasty uh, right let's see what we can do with a syringe full of acetone okay we got this thing loaded up and just gonna do our best be directing that into the keyway, but it's mostly just dribbling out the front. Uh, we've got some shop towels here so that we can mop this up. But, that has a smell to it. Just leave that there to soak some of that up. And let's try, you know what? By doing that one more time. I mean, hopefully some of this is actually working its way into the back of the lock. Obviously, if this were like actually mounted on a real door in real life. Uh, you can't tilt it or anything. Uh, so, just give it a moment there. Now, similarly to lock A, earlier on I could not get this all the way into the keyway. Now I can, but it also Hey, hey, result. So apparently, if you uh, don't mind making a bit of a mess, uh, you can, in fact, remove super glue that's been sitting there for half a day or so uh, by just injecting a ton of acetone in there. Uh, and actually you can see here this white stuff looks kind of like cobwebs that's coming out when I remove the key. That's uh, the super glue that's been, or the crazy glue that's been melted. So theoretically you may even uh, be able to get it to the point where the lock will be rendered safely functional again. Um, I would still probably recommend uh, replacing the lock or at the very least giving it a very thorough cleaning once you have gained entry. Uh, you know, take the thing off the door, take the cylinder, 
if you can disassemble it, if you can't uh, take the whole thing and dump it in a sealed sealed jar of acetone uh, for half an hour or so at least. Uh, because yeah, you definitely don't want to leave any uh, glue residue in there if you're going to be trying to keep that lock in service. But um, well, there, you know, there we there we go. That's that is something of a result. I definitely should have uh, mounted all of this before I set the jig up because I screwed up the timing on the tailpiece here. But <clears throat> point remains. We did, in fact, overcome the super glue there, so it is possible. Uh, heat, unless uh, you're dealing with a very small amount of glue, and it is it's still pretty toasty, uh, right at the face of the uh, keyway, you're probably not going to get uh, very good results with that. But if you can get yourself a small syringe of some kind uh, and you don't mind dribbling acetone all over the surface of the door, uh, you can, or at least you, you have a decent chance of being able to uh, get that uh, situation fixed without uh, destructively uh, or without destructively gaining entry. Just a little tip, just in case. Hopefully uh, none of you will ever experience that, and I certainly hope that none of you ever deliberately attempt to cause that sort of problem, uh, except in, obviously, an experimental setting like this. So until next time, folks, Thank you very much for bearing with me. Uh, stay safe. Happy picking. Uh, stay home and wear a mask if you're watching this anytime in 2020. Uh, because while I know most of you are not in New York, uh, you don't want to experience what we had here and what unfortunately we are quite likely going to have again in the future.